Fallout 76 released almost six years ago, and I can still remember to this day how this much-anticipated title got absolutely destroyed by gamers all over the world on launch day. Performance was lacking, the bugs were uncountable, and even the launch of Bethesda's official merchandise was a total nightmare, and Bethesda is to this day stained by this total catastrophe of a launch. All this said, I never actually tried Fallout 76 back when it released, and like many others, I was simply watching from the sidelines as Bethesda's reputation was burning up at record speeds. But all that changed this month, as after binging all eight episodes of the new Fallout TV show, my thirst for post-nuclear war content has never been greater, and so I decided to dive headfirst into the game often regarded as the black sheep of Bethesda's catalog of games, Fallout 76, in order to answer the age-old question, is it worth buying and getting into today? First, I want to mention that this isn't going to be one of those hyper-analytical reviews that look at every single aspect of the game, like every type of content there is. And while I'll be categorizing certain topics in this video, I'm generally going by feel here, because I'm looking at this from the perspective of a complete newcomer, which might make some of my points come off as a tad surface level. Still, it is what it is. Secondly, since Fallout 76 essentially builds on what Fallout 4 introduced to the series, I'll be looking at and comparing this to Fallout 4 at times, which is impossible not to do if you've played that game. And so, what are my first impressions of Fallout 76? Well, it's kind of a mixed bag. First, let's talk about the character creation for a bit. Creating your character in Fallout 76 is pretty much the same deal as in Fallout 4. You have a pretty generic shaping system where you simply select various presets and then you adjust by clicking onto your character's features and pulling them in various directions. The character creation system isn't the most advanced I've seen, and with the introduction of some amazing ones recently, like the one in Dragon's Dogma 2, it's hard to be satisfied with how your character turns out in Fallout 76. Then again, it's a pretty old game by today's standards, so one can't really be too hard on it. That said, I was hoping for an evolution since Fallout 4, but it's pretty much exactly the same, so I was a bit disappointed here. But hey, you can change your character's appearance at any point throughout the game, so at least there's that. Alright, so what about the story then? Well, it's there, I think. I'm gonna be perfectly honest here, I haven't really paid attention to the main story at all because there's really no hook to get you invested from the very beginning. All you find out at the start of the game is that the vault director for Vault 76 has gone missing and you're supposed to find her. Which goes back to the trope of you being a vault dweller in previous games where you go on a mission to find a missing family member. Now say what you will about Fallout 4's main story overall, but I do think that 4 managed to get you invested with the overall game world because of your supposed bond with your son, Sean, who after getting kidnapped by a shady group of people, becomes the focal point in the story of Fallout 4 as he set out to find and rescue him. Unfortunately, Fallout 76 just tells you of this no-name director and you're supposed to find her, and after creating your character, it's not long before you leave the vault to go on your post-apocalyptic adventure. And so right off the bat, I really have no emotional investment at all here, which immediately made me ask, why am I supposed to find her? Sure, the game tells you why, but it doesn't make any effort in making you care for the reason as to why. Couple this with a dialogue system that feels pretty tacked on, where none of your choices feel like they actually matter, and we have a recipe for a pretty unengaging plotline. Now as far as I can tell, the main story in Fallout 76 is just supposed to guide you through the game world at first, but it never really feels organic like in past games. Instead, since this is an always online live service game, it immediately shoves a bunch of stuff at you right from the start. Stuff like activities, side quests, crafting, and base building, and it's very easy to feel overwhelmed and lose your sense of direction right from the get-go. Now don't get me wrong, I like content as much as anyone, but unfortunately, Fallout 76 just throws a ton of stuff at you in an almost disorganized way. It doesn't help that the main quest does nothing to make you feel invested with whatever happened to the director, and so immediately I went my own merry way as I surmised that the main quest is just a tiny fraction of what Fallout 76 offers. And I surmised correctly, because as soon as I started exploring the world of 76, I finally started getting that quintessential Fallout feeling of exploring a post-apocalyptic land filled with dangers, curious items, and people at every corner of the map. Now this, of course, is a good thing. You see, part of what I find so appealing with the Fallout series, particularly Fallout 3 and 4, is the very thing that Bethesda has become known for, which is the sort of emergent gameplay where things just sort of happen as you explore the world on your own terms. 
things like getting smacked into the stratosphere by giants in Skyrim, or running into a massive crab in Fallout 4, and other really cool things that just builds up the world and immerses you into it. And I'm happy to say that Fallout 76 has this too, and while I haven't experienced a great many moments like this, I still want to point out that it is there, and so I've still managed to enjoy myself to a degree because of this. Now, of course, I gotta mention the graphics for a bit here, and well, yeah, the environment looks pretty alright, I guess. It's not anything mind-blowing, and even back during the infamous presentation by Todd Howard, I still wasn't that impressed by what I saw. The map is probably the most diverse yet in the Fallout series, though, so there is that. Character models are, well, the less we say about them, the better. Now, another important aspect to enjoying a game is obviously the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, and so let's talk about the combat for a bit. And well, honestly, there's not really much to say, other than if you've played Fallout 4, then you'll feel right at home. Almost. Kinda. Because you see, the shooting mechanics, the movement, the guns, it's all essentially copy-pasted from Fallout 4 onto Fallout 76. Now, this isn't necessarily a bad thing. In fact, I've enjoyed the combat in Fallout 76. Mostly. Now, as I kept playing, I started to notice more and more that something felt a little bit off, that I wasn't really jiving with the combat as I did in Fallout 4, which bumped me out because I started thinking that maybe I didn't like Fallout 4's combat as much as I think I did. But then it struck me. The one thing that just makes combat so lackluster to me in Fallout 76 is a combination of two things. First, the uneven frames per second, and then a watered down VAT system. Now the vault tech assisted targeting system, or VATS for short, has always been one of my favorite mechanics in gaming. For the uninitiated, VAT simply lets you target enemies in super slow-mo, letting you pick what body part you want to aim at, and if upon activation your shot hits your target, you're rewarded with a really satisfying kill cam, making it a sort of on-demand finisher of sorts, at least in Fallout 4. Now unfortunately, Fallout 76's VATS does not have slow-mo, obviously because it's an online game, and neither does it have a kill cam as far as I can tell. Perhaps it's a perk you unlock later on, perhaps not. The point still stands though that it just feels much worse, as all you do is just shoot your gun like you normally do, only that the VATS auto-aims for you. Tie this together with the fact that I'm playing on PC and I'm used to playing on frames that exceed 120 plus, the aiming and shooting part just feels not as good as I want it to. Now before you say anything, yes, I know that Fallout 4 has a max of 60 FPS, but unlike 76, you can use mods to unlock the frames per second in Fallout 4. And because Fallout 4 runs better than 76, it just feels so much better in terms of gameplay. And after spoiling myself with this unlocked FPS, Fallout 76 just feels like such a massive step down because everything just feels so choppy and uneven. Worst of all is that I'm playing on a PC equipped with a 4090 GPU and a 7950X 3D CPU, yet I'm still noticing uneven frame times which just makes moving your camera feel so, quite frankly, bad. Okay, so what about the bugs and glitches? Well, I've encountered a small amount of annoyances like strange animations, headless NPCs, and NPCs walking through buildings, and while this takes you out of the experience for a bit, these moments have been very few and far between, so it's not been too bad. I'm actually sort of surprised at how little bugs I've experienced so far with regards to how the game looked at launch. Then again, it's been almost six years, so Bethesda's had a lot of time to fix the game. So, do I think that Fallout 76 is the worst game ever made? No, of course not. On the contrary, it's not at all as bad as some folks have made it out to be. But I can definitely see why so many people just can't get into it. Sure, it has elements that made Fallout 4 such a fun experience, like base building, armor and weapon crafting, and that much needed ingredient of emergent gameplay, but the world building and the pacing just isn't there for me. The paper-thin plotline in the early hours of the game makes it really hard to find a reason to feel invested, and as I'm mostly a solo player without gamer friends, I also lost out on the ingredient that might have made my experience at least a little more pleasant for the majority of my playtime. Bye, have a great time! Which seems to be the co-op aspect of it. Because you see, once I actually did encounter a player that was doing the same event that I was, the experience actually got more enjoyable. And this brief time I've had with other people proved to me that Fallout 76 is a game you're supposed to enjoy with other people. Of course, because it's technically an MMO. And I strongly disagree with the notion that this game is just as enjoyable solo, because it quite literally isn't designed to be. If anything, the lack of an engaging story and interesting characters leaves place for you and other players to write your own story as you journey through the wasteland. 
So at the end of the day, if you've got some time and friends to kill and you're looking for something for you and your buddies to mess around with, then sure, Fallout 76 could be a playground for various shenanigans to take place. But if you're like me, the forever solo type player, then perhaps you should look elsewhere for immersion and depth. Then again, Fallout 76 is currently sitting at 8 euros or dollars until April 19th, so if you've got some buddies that are hankering for a co-op experience, this could be a couple of hours of fun for you. However, as soon as the price goes back down to 40 bucks again, well, I'd recommend holding off until the next sale because I still think $40 is too much for a game that essentially is just multiplayer Fallout 4. All right, let me know what you think in the comments below as always. Whether you disagree or agree with me, I'm still curious as to how you guys feel about Fallout 76 as of today. Have a great day and remember to subscribe for more. Mr. Holton, signing out.